Hi, this is Julie Bartlett with Color IQ, and I am so excited to get to introduce to you Helen Tobias with Imagination. It's, Helen is an image consultant in Kent, England, which is just outside of London. Helen has had her business for nine years, and one of the exciting things to get to speak with her about is what is going on in England in regards to fashion and the influence that the uh, Duchess of Cambridge is having on the fashion industry. So Helen, thank you uh, for joining us and uh, interviewing with us here at Color IQ. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Julie, for inviting me. It's, uh, it's great to link up. Dallas to uh, London. It's a rainy, rainy, cold evening here in London. So um, I expect it's a little warmer in Dallas. Uh, very little. It's winter. We actually have cool temps, so it would be in the upper 60s here today. And so we do have some sunshine, but we don't have any more rain. We need it, though. Okay. So Helen, tell me a little bit about you and your business and why you got started. Right. Well, um, approximately nine years ago, I decided I needed a change in direction. And um, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more creative. And I'd always had an interest in fashion. And when I sort of sat down and thought what I might like to do, I decided that I wanted to become an image consultant and train and help ladies understand more about colour and also the styles of clothes that would suit them. So I set up my, uh, my business and um, it's been going very well, but it has changed slightly over the years uh, as I've got more experience. Um, I specialise in trying to help business women in particular uh, get a good walk working wardrobe together. I um, in the last three years have started to train other girls to become image consultants. So that has been extremely rewarding for me. Um, but I still do personal work one-to-one -one with ladies. Um, I'm starting to do a lot of ebooks and writing and I'm quite a keen blogger as well. So That's great. Quite a mixture. Yes. And, and we kind of mirror, uh, our businesses mirror a bit. I noticed that on your website you work with a lot of people who've, who have gone through some kind of a life transition. Yes. And the opportunity to really redefine themselves well uh, and to establish a personal brand that really reflects you know, who they are, acknowledges who they are uh, in their attire. Is, is what we do at Color IQ also. So it's always nice to have a sister in, out in the universe creating the same uh, kind of positive impact on her community as, as we want to do. And we recently launched Color IQ University to teach others who want to be image consultants as well. So it's very exciting. Congratulations to you. And congratulations to you with your university. Thank you. So I am so excited to hear about, we see all kinds of pictures about the, with the royal family and certainly the new edition. And we're, we've been, you know, we watch her, we're fascinated. Just think the Duchess of Cambridge is a beautiful young woman. And we're so excited about uh, this couple. And... Um, Certainly, what seems to be a very loving and healthy relationship. And when she walks out the door, we love to see what she's wearing. So tell us, because you're right there in the midst of it, how is she impacting the fashion trends that are going on in, in England? Well, she has having a tremendous impact um, because whenever she steps outside her door, whether it's on a private uh, occasion or a public event, she gets a huge number of column inches in the press or she's reported on the television. And she is scrutinized to within an inch. Um, 
Yesterday she was out meeting pensioners because of the Remembrance Day poppy appeal over here. And she changed her parting from her, of her hair. And there's been uproar. Uh, just a, a, an inch movement in the parting. And um, there's been lots and lots of discussion. Um, in, favor, in favor of the change or uh, resisting that change? They didn't actually like the change. They didn't feel the move in the parting um, was good for her features. Um, so, so that's interesting. Um, but whenever she wears something, within, within minutes of her um, appearing, you know who the designer is or you know which shop she's bought it from in London. Um, because the, the thing with the Duchess of Cambridge is that although she has beautifully bespoke clothes, she also wears clothes that she buys on the high street. And so from that point of view, it makes it very interesting for ladies because they can get their hands on the clothes that she wears. Mm -hmm. And many of the clothes that she wears from the high street are actually a very reasonable price. Sometimes yes, yes. she's seen in dresses that are well under um, a hundred pounds. So uh, what about a hundred and twenty dollars? Mm -hmm. so, we see uh, certainly some of those pictures, and, and so the High Street is the what designer district in England or the high end shops. She would tend to go to the top top end of the high street but also she goes into places like Topshop which mm -hmm. are just trendy fashion stores um, so they're about mid-range high street really and does she get a, a private showing in the when she walks in do they have a heads up that she's on her way and give her a I, private viewing in the store I don't believe they do because she is often uh, shot during the daytime just walking out of the shops um, just like any other shopper. Right. That's, that's wonderful and we love it. Her accessibility is somewhat amazing and, and but it's very enjoyable mm. in large part because she always looks very nice with that and never seems to overdo. And I think that's what is another thing that makes her interesting for young women. They can see her dressing beautifully in clothes that really suit her. And the clothes are quite discreet. So mm -hmm. you can, most, most women can wear a similar style. Uh, of course, she is extremely slim. Um, but generally speaking, she wears things with a sleeve and a, a, a high neckline and not too short. So straight away, that sort of style can be emulated by other people. I read an article that uh, was she wore hosiery last year, and the uh, media uh, made a, a big deal over it, and it caused an increase in hosiery sales in England by like 44%. Yeah. Um, the Duchess of Cambridge, or Catherine, she wears a 15 denier nude tight. And the sales of nude hosiery in the UK have more than trebled. Um, we've had a couple of quite cool summers in the UK. So I think that helped really. Mm. Because um, we've had wet, rainy weather and we didn't really want to take off our tights. So when everybody saw Catherine wearing this uh, 15 denier nude tight, as you say, the sales went up. Um, George in Asda, or I think you call it, it's Walmart in the US, um, their sales have gone up 500% apparently. Um, it's just phenomenal, just phenomenal the impact she's had. And even her sister, Pippa, um, has also helped with this trend. But it's very much um, part of the 
uh, protocol, if you like, for being in the royal family. Um, you would not go into the Queen's presence without tights on. And you wouldn't wear an open-toed shoe either. So her wearing tights is really part of the royal protocol. But she has made that nude tight really, really fashionable again because it was quite old-fashioned, old lady, and right. she started uh, being seen wearing it. Yeah, in the Dallas area, because the summers are over 100 degrees, uh, sometimes for just a week and then sometimes for unending weeks, it's difficult for a lot of women to even want to put hosiery on. Now, my opinion is that if you're uh, if you're working inside an office building, those temperatures are are often in the low 70s. So, um, but we know how air movement inside buildings can sometimes be stifled or in excess. Um, but with it getting cooler here and winter time coming on, uh, hosiery tights, especially textured tights and ones with designs. Will kind of come back in some popularity, which is really uh, nice to see. And there are so w many women who have had surgeries on their on their knees, or they have varicose veins, and really struggle with the trend to not wear hosiery because for them it gives a little bit of distraction. Uh, it softens uh, whatever uh, scarring or imperfections they have on their legs. Do you find that in England as well, or just in you know an everyday attire? The trend is going back to wearing hosiery, but do you find that there's um, um, almost a relief that it's come back in style? I, I think for ladies who are perhaps over forty, there is some relief that it's coming back. For me, I never, I, I always wore tights. Um, because I think it's more appropriate in a business setting to wear hosiery. Um, but the younger girls, um, certainly ladies under 35, you know it would be quite common not to wear hosiery. Um, but there are many young ladies in the UK who really like to have their spray tan. Uh, and so although they may be showing their legs, they have at least got brown legs. Right. There's some color on there. There's some color. It still so strikes the eye, softens it a bit. Yeah, exactly. Now you wear hats far more than we do here in the state. Yes. Um, uh, you know, it depends kind of on the season. Uh, it, when it comes to holidays, we'll see some hats, um, and then sometimes in the summer, straw hats and such. But you really celebrate the hats that you wear, and they're. They're very, um, there's a lot to the hat, you know, <laughs> uh, whereas we wear them fairly simple. Um, and we, I enjoy the pictures of the hats that we see in England because it just is reminiscent of a time that in the States when we did wear, when we did wear hats. Yeah. But you have more special occasions for them, correct? I think, um, again, younger women embrace hats of all shapes and sizes and colors throughout the seasons. Um, for, for older women, yes, we tend to wear them for more formal occasions like weddings or christenings. The, the fascinator, you know, the little feathery piece that yeah. um, goes on a headband, those are becoming less popular now and very much the, the Duchess of Cambridge's style to wear a small hat on the front of the head at a 50 degree angle is, is very popular. Okay. Now what do you see as far as makeup trends go? Um, in the States they, we still like a real natural. It kind of goes from natural to a little more dramatic. Uh, or a classic look with a soft eye and a red lip. But where do you see them in England? What's really popular? Um, again, it depends on age. The smoky eye look is still very, very popular, particularly for evening wear. 
Um, and when you've got a, uh, a smoky eye, then the trend really is to have a very pale, very neutral lip. Mm -hmm. um, the wearing of foundation is sort of coming back again, um, particularly the sort of photo-ready foundations that look really great when you're having photographs taken because I think many girls are snapping photos on their phones. So it, to wear a good foundation, they're going to look good in the photographs. Um, in terms of nails, because I know Americans love to have their manicures and pedicures, we're still seeing quite a lot of French manicures. Okay. So that's with the very white tips. Um, and nail polish of all colors is really in fashion at the moment. Yes, so uh, I particularly like wearing nail varnish. Now, long nails, short nails? I would say um, short to medium, yeah. Not long, 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 no. no. Right. As far as uh, uh, shoes go, right now it seems to be that every heel height is very popular here, which is a wonderful thing because if you have, if you don't like wearing high heels or your job doesn't require that you wear high heels or your company actually requires you to wear a lower heel. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really nice because you can feel good and, and feel like you're very in fashion no matter what shoe you're wearing. What's going on in England? Well, every every heel type is in fashion in the UK as well. Um, but you may have seen pictures with very, very high platforms on our shoes and therefore very, very high heels. And there is a tendency now for that to the platform to, to, to go. So just very small platforms on high heeled shoes are is fashionable at the moment. Um, I think it was too dangerous to wear shoes with some of these very, very big uh, platforms. Yeah, they couldn't um, walk. They couldn't walk, no. We call them taxi shoes because you can only take a taxi when you're wearing them. <laughs> So in regards to um, hairstyles, right now um, short hair is very big in, in the States. Of course, you always have you know, all links, but a lot of the celebrities are sporting shorter hairstyles right now. What do you see in England? Um, I think the hair generally is longer. And um, whether that's the influence of the Duchess of Cambridge, I'm not sure. But when I go into London, into the big department stores such as Selfridges, they have blow dry, hair, uh, blow dry bars now, which is a new phenomenon in England. So you can pop out of the office at lunchtime and you can have your hair blow dried. Um, so hair extensions um, are quite big as well, quite fashionable. Um, so yes, I would say slightly longer hair at the moment. In terms of color, I think possibly we've moved away slightly from blonde hair. Um, you can probably see from the picture, my hair is quite red at the moment, um, although difficult to see under the light here. And so the mid-tones and the red, um, red hues are, are very fashionable and very current at the moment. That's really great. Um, and that's, it's such fun to see, know what's going on across the pond. How is it different and how is it similar? Um, is there anything else that you've seen uh, going on in, in fashion um, that we need to know about here in the U.S.? Well, uh, London fashion can be very uh, wacky, very off the wall. Um, and we have a, a lot of people who follow the, the fashion shows in Milan and Paris and New York for that matter. Um, so at the moment we're seeing in the high street a lot of influence from the catwalks. Um, I think the Celine shows were very, very popular this year. The, the, the clothes that Celine produced have taken off. Um, the turtleneck sweater, the check, tartan is very big at the moment and of course it's a great color to wear coming up to Christmas because you have the bright reds and the greens and the rich blues. So we're seeing a lot of that. Um, we're also seeing quite a lot of what I would call biker chic. So lots of uh, very smart leather jackets. 
that you can dress up and wear with a formal dress, uh, but you can wear it with your jeans and some low boots and make it look really grungy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a, a real trend towards lifestyle dressing. It isn't as uh, controlled dressing. Dress codes seem to, well, not seem to, they've really softened up over the past 10 years. Um, and there are some advantages to that and disadvantages because there's so much confusion over here as to really what do I wear to work and um, so helping clients just know how to how are they going to define business casual is a very important role that I think we play. I think um when you travel around the world, the business casual means different things to different people. Um, business casual to me in England at the moment would be uh, a skirt and a jacket, which didn't necessarily match, but I would always like to see a jacket on someone um, or a jacket over a dress during the summer. Um, in London, in the city, of course, you still have people wearing very formal suits. The men wear very formal attire. And uh, the same is true of, uh, of women. And there are more and more people who uh, are more and more shops that are catering for the businesswoman and producing really high quality suits. Um, when it comes to working in sort of advertising and media, you can get away with a lot more and be more casual. Um, but yeah, I think um, for most people, smart casual, um, smart business wear is the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely a trend. Right. Well, Helen, it has been an absolute joy. We have um, sent many emails back and forth for several now, and it's always uh, it's always great. I never know quite the time. I can't keep track of our time differences, but um, it's. It's just wonderful, and uh, I want to say thank you very much for um, having a, a hangout with us and sharing what's going on in your world so that our world gets a little brighter and a little smarter, and uh, it just keeps it really fun. Well, it's been a pleasure, Julie, and if you've got any listeners who would uh, like some information, perhaps because they're coming over to the UK, on holiday and would like to know what to pack to wear, um, then they're more than welcome to email me or ask me a questions direct. I'd be very happy to answer them. And your email is? My easiest email is helen at imaginationonline.info. That's where they can reach me. Great. And we're going to put out, uh, you've gathered some links uh, on fashion uh, tips, and what's going on in, in the UK, and we're going to provide all that information in our newsletter. That's uh, right. As well as with this YouTube. So hopefully you'll get some good connections from here as well. It'll be my pleasure, and thank you very much. I've really enjoyed speaking with you this afternoon. Thanks, Helen. Thank you. you have a wonderful weekend that's coming up, and I uh, hope you have a great amount of sunshine over there. <laughs> thank you very much, Judy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Bye.